Hello all. Welcome to Kalam IS Academy. This is Priyanka Mahapatra, faculty at Kalam IS for SC. So today we'll be having a detailed analysis of the UPSC SC paper 2022. That is, history is a series of victories won by the scientific man over the romantic man. Okay. So before actually writing the main content of the essay, we do certain exercises. So firstly, we choose the topic. After getting the question paper, you spend some five minutes of your time for choosing the topic, and that is done on some parameters. So what are those parameters? Like whether you are able to generate the macro dimensions to it or not, whether you are able to generate the four five major dimensions to to it or not. whether you are able to generate the micro argument the examples associated with the arguments or not whether you are able to generate the counter argument part of the essay or not right and whether you are able to write a good introduction to it or not whether you are able to find a quotation or an appropriate anecdote to be written in the introduction or not okay so these things you decide okay and when you find yourself comfortable that i have enough content for the particular essay then you decide that this is the topic of the day this is your topic of the day okay then after choosing the topic you go for brainstorming in the rough page of the answer sheet okay so in the brainstorming what do you do you just collect all the ideas so you just write down whether the ideas are relevant irrelevant structured unstructured you just have to write down in the rough page of your answer sheet and then what do you do then you filter out that what content is actually going well with the topic of the essay so that's where everything is checked that if you are beating around the bush or you are writing closely to the topic according to the upsc directive so the upsc directive as you all know it says that you should be writing closely to the topic so that's where everything is checked all the the demand of the upsc is checked okay then you arrange those points uh, the macro dimension the micro dimension the arguments examples in a orderly fashion in a logical fashion so that when you write the actual essay your essay will look like that it is having a natural flow to it it is coherent the points are arranged in a coherent manner in a logical manner okay and your expression should be effective and exact also according to the upsc directive for sc okay and when you do brainstorming your uh, repetition of points is also avoided because you know that which example is going where and you are not repeating the same example some in some point which is written later in the later part of the sc right and then you also uh, define or decide the introduction and conclusion to the essay as well in that point of time in that the brainstorming session only so that you have the complete framework with you complete framework ready with you and you just need to write the main content you just have to expand those ideas while writing the 10 pages while filling the those 10 pages you just have to expand those ideas already decided in the brainstorming session right so that's where the brainstorming session is very very important okay it's not that only you are defining some points which are coming to your mind in the brainstorming session no you should be defining a, each and everything okay starting from the introduction how you are going to introduce the essay how you are writing the scope what all dimensions you are generating and make sure that you have four five major dimensions to the essay and in what way you are going to conclude the essay as well okay connecting back to the introduction right so everything is decided then then and there and then you write the content of the essay okay so coming to this essay what are the major dimensions so pause down the video right now and create your own dimensions for 15 minutes do your brainstorming and then again check with the dimensions written in your screen okay and then i am not telling that these are the final dimensions you can have your own but make sure that the dimensions you are writing are very much closely associated with the topic it is not deviating from the topic okay so the dimensions which i have created is like what is characterizing the scientific man so the topic is saying that the history is the series of victories won by the scientific man uh, over the romantic man so here the main keyword is 
scientific man and the romantic man so this you need to explain firstly that what are the characteristics of the scientific man what do you understand by scientific man and then what are the characteristics of the romantic man what do you understand by romantic man so these two dimensions would be the first dimensions then you would come to the main demand of the topic that is how can you say that historically the scientific man has always triumphed over the romantic man so the topic is saying that history is a series of victories won by the scientific man over the romantic man that you have to justify first and that is the main main um, content of the essay that means that dimension should be given more weightage in terms of pages that you cover you should be giving actually 2 3 pages for it you should be writing at least 5 6 examples and those 5 6 examples must be diverse okay they should be from different spheres economically technologically historically okay internationally right so that's how your essay will become diverse and the dimensions multiple dimensions created in your essay will make your essay multi dimensional okay so people say na that your essay must be multi dimensional okay it doesn't mean that you have to give a number of examples and that will make your essay multi dimensional no it is about bringing many questions those four five dimensions which i was talking about those questions should be covered in your essay to make it more comprehensive right am i clear so then then you would come to the reasons that what made the scientific man consistently win over the romantic man okay so the reasons would be covered and then you would come to the counter argument part of the essay that does romantic man stand no chance to win over it is um, it is a counter argument of the essay that you are countering the main uh, statement in the essay topic so the main statement in the essay topic is saying that it is only the scientific man that has achieved victory over the romantic man but you would counter over here that no it is not always the case that the scientific man has always won over the romantic man there are cases where romantic man has also won over the scientific man so those examples you must be writing in what situations right and then you come to the contemporary relevance of this quotation very very important aspect of the essay so wherever it is possible in fact in many essays it is possible to write the contemporary relevance that you should be writing to each and every essay that will give you an edge over others okay then you come to the way forward of the essay that is the last part of the body where you would write that what are the ways to promote rationality and scientific mindset and then the conclusion so conclusion has to be balanced okay so it is important to have a balance of both emotion and science about the scientific temper okay you should be creating a balance between the two both are required in the society okay so that's how you would be proceeding with the whole essay so coming to the introduction here we all know that there are various ways in which an essay topic can be introduced right so uh, there is quotation based introduction there can be anecdote based introduction as it is done here but you have to make sure that both the ways or whichever way you are applying for introduction of the essay it has to be very very impactful why because it is the first impression of the examiner for reading the rest of your essay so it should be very very impactful and you have to make sure that whatever anecdote and quotation you are giving it has to go well with the meaning of the essay as a whole remember this that whatever quotation or anecdote you are giving it should justify the whole meaning of the essay the comprehensive meaning of the essay topic it should not justify only the partial meaning of the essay topic okay this is a very very common mistake i have seen in my students so you have to justify the anecdote in the whole meaning of the essay you can use the keywords of the given topic to justify the meaning of the anecdote and quotation okay so coming to here um, i have taken an anecdote about ramayana where i have said that ravana was dealing with romanticism 
he was made invincible and he had the power to assume any form he wished he was so powerful and he was th therefore in the world of romanticism that he can defeat anybody nobody is invincible than him but the greed of power it superseded his power of knowledge and rationality therefore he misused his power and committed innumerable adversities on the mankind even he unlawfully abducted the wife of lord rama but later lord rama he engineered a plan resting on the scientific ideals of sort analysis teamwork participation and role classification so lord rama he devised the plan using the scientific techniques and therefore he defeated the formidable ravana kingdom with an army of monkeys imagine with the army of monkeys he defeated the formidable ravana kingdom by endorsing the scientific approach so that's where you can justify the meaning of the topic by this anecdote okay by this anecdote you are telling that it is a scientific approach it is a scientific man it is a logic of the techniques used by the scientific man the practical approach devised by the scientific man is responsible for the victory over the romantic man okay that's it you have to just justify the whole meaning of the essay in the anecdote then we start with the body part so as discussed firstly we need to write that what characterizes the scientific man so here scientific man he is having four c's that is concept creativity critical thinking and courage so scientific man he has a good conceptual understanding of the situations he is having a good situational awareness he is employing certain creative ways to bring about innovative solutions and how can he bring innovative solutions through critical thinking through situational awareness through showing courage to deal with the situation okay and then he has also got a rational mind that means his decisions they are based on reasons it is based on strong evidence and facts okay and also he has got some pragmatic approach to life that means uh, the decisions are based on practical considerations they are based on understanding of the reality of the prevailing situation okay he is in the present he is not in the future or the past his mind is in the present he is very much aware of the situation around him okay so socrates maintain that un examined and unexamined life is not worth living so basically the emphasis is being on the importance of logical reasoning the scientific man examines and questions the anomalies around him rather than being ignorant okay so rather than being ignorant he questions everything that's what is the scientific man okay you can give a quotation by socrates over here so the basic idea is to write the quotations in between okay and make sure that it is justifying with the micro argument or the macro argument okay then you can also give some uh, sayings like science is the way of thinking much more than it is a body of knowledge one need not be a scientist to be the scientific man okay some examples also you have to write so whenever you are giving some concept or some features every time you remember that you have to give an example to substantiate to justify the arguments you made you can give example of mahatma gandhi apj abdul kalam raja ram mohan roy b r ambedkar ms dhoni how they have devised the scientific techniques in order to defeat in order to have victory over the situation right then we come to the romantic man so what characterizes the romantic man as against the scientific man what characterizes the romantic man so the romantic man is basically emotion driven his decisions are based on emotions and sentiments his decisions are based on intuitions reactionary thoughts instantaneous reactionary thoughts he is not aware of the situation he is in he lacks situational awareness 
he is uh, not backed by substantial reasoning his decisions uh, they lack proper evidences and facts therefore he is prejudiced because he leans he depends on the rigid stereotypes and ideologies okay so rigid stereotypes they pave their way into the psyche of the romantic man and therefore tampering the decision making process of the romantic man for example you can give adolf hitler you can talk of duryodhana in mahabharata people practicing social evils like sati dowry killing and honor killing where every decision is based on certain stereotypes some prejudices which is lacking evidence and facts which is lacking scientific reasoning okay so that's how we can characterize the romantic then you come to the main demand of the topic that how can you say that historically the scientific man has triumphed over the romantic man so this is the main demand of the topic you should be giving more weightage to this dimension you should be bringing at least 4 5 6 dimensions examples to it sorry from various peers you can talk of historians you can talk of the foreign policy the international thing the industrial revolution scientific thing the medical advancement the green revolution environment thing the economy thing that's how your examples will be diverse okay and it should be around 2 3 pages of your answer sheet right so that's how you are giving a proper weightage to this major dimension of your essay topic so starting with mahatma gandhi what did he do so scientific what was so scientific about him so you all know the story that despite carrying a valid ticket how he was thrown out of the first class compartment in south africa and that made him think that made a huge setback but he took his scientific way of thinking forward so instead of getting swayed away by the temptation to adopt any militant approach which the romantic men would have adopted too easily but rather what did he do he espoused a scientific method and he spearheaded a non violent movement against the racial discrimination in south africa ahimsa and satyagraha being the major weapons okay and the movement finally culminated in giving the rights to the black people at par with the white people and ultimately the elimination the eradication of apartheid in south africa so that's how you can justify each example in the context of the essay you can either use the keywords of the essay over here in order to justify the example or you can use the synonyms to the keywords of the essay but the whole idea is here that it should justify the whole meaning of the essay whole um, meaning of the dimension that is the macro dimension this one okay then you can talk of raja ram mohan roy again how the indian society was plagued with various social evils like dowry sati practice etc and they were practiced by the romantic men of that time devoid of any evidence facts any logical reasoning just going by the ideologies but the leaders like raja ram mohan roy they adopted scientific practice because of their scientific temper and instead of um, despite facing a lot of criticism and hurdles and they were successful okay so eventually they were successful in uprooting those social evils of the time then you come to the india's foreign policy what is so scientific about it so you all know that soon after india's independence the world was witnessing the cold war and every country was made to choose one side either us side or ussr side but india did a unique thing it chose to remain non aligned but during that time this move was considered to be the most romantic move it was said to be the nehru's romanticism but later it was realized that it was the best move taken it was the best scientific move taken and it was possible due to india's long term collective temperament towards the policy making okay then you can talk of industrial revolution 
so how it transition from the agrarian and handmade production to the machine based manufacturing how the agrarian and man made production were led by romantic thoughts and ideologies there were no no use of science no use of knowledge no use of techniques but again when we transition to the machine based manufacturing the science won we all know the developments thereafter so it played a very very crucial role in the manufacturing scientific and technological advancements okay innovations in machinery steam power manufacturing processes led to significant economic and societal changes okay so that's how you can justify the example in the context of the essay then you come to the medical advancement you can talk of vaccine antibiotics and the me medical procedures how they have contributed to the triumph of the scientific methods over the illnesses which were thought to be unsurmountable okay they were thought to be insurmountable in one period of time the illnesses were very hard to defeat okay there were so many epidemics so many deaths but due to the breakthrough in the vaccine technology in the antibiotics there was triumph of scientific methods then you can talk of green revolution how it involved the practical application the practical application of the scientific methods to the agriculture leading to increased food production through the high yielding varieties of seeds pesticides and fertilizers and how it helped uh, to address the food shortages in various parts of the world okay so how before we were not using those technologies not having those knowledge but now we are using the high yielding varieties of seeds the forecasting technology the science the knowledge behind it the reasoning behind it the calculations the statistics so how science is triumphing over the romantic man this way you can justify every example in the sense of the essay then we come to the next so let's now come to the reasons what made the scientific man consistently win over the romantic man so we can talk of the scientific principles like planning strategy analysis goal orientation innovativeness creativity and how these scientific principles are helping one person to take the accurate stock of the situation and to have a best plan to solve uh, a problem there or to meet an objective there then we can talk of long term vision okay because of the long term vision which the scientific man is having he is able to visualize he is able to think about the long term consequences and that makes him better equipped that makes him better equipped of the situation okay so he is ready with all the plan b's if the plan a will not work then he is ready with the plan b to deal with the situation because he is having a birds eye view of the problem okay he is having a bigger vision of the problem right then we can talk of the enlightenment and beyond that happened in europe so how uh, it was happening because of the societal changes because of the cultural shifts because of the advancements in knowledge and technology okay this is also one of the reasons for the enlightenment and thereafter what we are still witnessing right so these are the basic reasons then comes the main counter argument of the essay so what do you mean by counter argument of the essay that is you are countering the main argument of the essay topic so here the main essay topic is asking that how the scientific man is winning over the romantic man and here you have to counter that it is not always the case where the scientific man is winning over the romantic man there are many cases where romantic man is also winning over the scientific man right so what are the cases in the high level risk taking okay at times in life where the situation calls for high level risk taking the scientific man is more likely to back out from such situations considering the odds considering his calculations but there the romantic man is often encouraged often like empathetically dedicated towards one's purpose he is ready to take that extra mileage extra mile whatever the consequences may be okay so for example here we can give an example 
example of dr glen cunningham so we can write that how during his childhood he was caught in a fire accident and he was assumed that he wouldn't live even okay he was not expected to survive and would surely never walk because of his poor physical aptitude but he one day he has ran the world's fastest mile so how this was possible because of his romantic determination to walk okay and his persistence his consistency okay to walk to start walking and he ran the world's fastest mile so this example you can give it in order to justify that romanticism can also win over the scientific temper sometimes then comes the contemporary relevance so this dimension is very very important in your essay wherever there is a possibility write down this contemporary relevance that how this quotation is relevant as of now okay taking examples of the current happening okay so this will create an edge over the others for example here you can write the role of emotional intelligence in professional settings so you all know that professional settings is all about the cognitive skills the knowledge base the scientific temper but there the emotions also play a very very important role in the leadership qualities in the interpersonal relationships okay so you need to understand and navigate the emotions in the right way in the professional settings okay so both emotions and the cognitive skills and the reasoning both are important in the professional settings as you grow higher in the hierarchy then the emotions uh, the emotion management becomes very very important then comes the ethical consideration whenever the technology is advancing whenever the science is advancing so here you can give the example of ai okay so here we all knew about the benefits of artificial intelligence but now the deep morph the deep fake videos they are in picture so we need to consider the ethical concerns there okay so as the technology is advancing we need to think about the ethical considerations they become very critical so what do you mean by those ethical considerations it is from the responsible use of scientific knowledge taking care of the privacy concerns doing the right impact analysis on the society of the technological advancements like we did that how women were more impacted by the deep fake videos because internet was already a hostile place for them and now the deep fake videos they are being more vulnerable for it okay so that's how you can justify the ethical consideration then comes the taliban's romanticism how the people of afghanistan they are suffering as a consequence of the geopolitical decisions made by the west particularly in negotiating with the taliban or the islamic emirate which it uh, one one day it was wanting to eliminate okay so you can talk of the taliban's romanticism then you can talk of the rising authoritarianism due to the emerging rulers with romantic tendencies okay you can talk of north korea you can talk of putin in russia right so this is all about the contemporary relevance then the way ahead how to promote the rationality and the scientific mindset so we will promote the education at all levels the stem education science technology engineering and mathematics then we'll talk of the socialization how family and the schools they can be a uh, important way or means to ingrain the scientific temperament in the students then we can also um, have a culture of fact checking before sharing any news through word or social media how movies can play a very very responsible role by showcasing and building the scientific temper in the society then we can talk of role models how they can highlight the achievements of uh, the scientists the researchers and the critical thinkers in the society and how they are contributing to the society positively right then we can talk of the scientific literacy and the awareness campaigns that will 
increase the scientific temper that will bring the scientific temper in the individuals in the citizens then we can promote the idea of lifelong learning and continuous education where we have to adapt we have to learn every day okay according to the changing social dynamics the education is not ending in one day we have to continuously evolve with the changing societal dynamics okay so these all you have to write in the way forward then comes the conclusion of the essay so here you have to talk about the balance so throughout the essay we just justified one by one that how scientific man was winning over the romantic man how scientific temper was important then in some cases romantic man emotions they were also important to be considered over the scientific man right then we come to the conclusion to have the balance to have the right balance in oneself subject to the demand of the situation according to the situation we would act okay and we would uh, mention here that how emotions and rationality they are not entirely antagonistic to each other they are not mutually exclusive to each other they are complementary to each other then you would refer back to the introduction very very important aspect of conclusion where you will be connecting back to the introduction so we um, had given the anecdote of lord rama and ravana so here we would write that one must strive to defeat the romantic ravanas of one life which are in the form of dark thoughts like prejudices lust greed irrationality through the scientific principles as in, as endorsed by lord rama so this is how we can give the reference to the introduction again right so hope you are clear hope you are clear with the structure of the essay how the dimensions are created how the examples are brought about in order to justify the macro arguments of the essay then how to bring the counter argument of the essay then give the example also there how to write the way ahead part of the essay right and how to conclude what are the elements of a good conclusion right so this is all about this topics discussion thank you so much happy learning